Hey everybody, it's Eric from the Mature Minded Gamers. Today, me and Will are going to break down some new video games coming out this week that we are super excited for. Star Wars Squadrons, releasing in just under an hour for us here. Oh and, yeah. Yes, and also Baldur's Gate 3, which actually got delayed a couple weeks ago. It was supposed to already be out on September the 30th. They delayed it until the 7th of October. So it's coming out next week to... In my opinion, fantastic game of the year eligible games. Even though Baldur's Gate's coming out early access, I think it's going to be amazing. And then obviously Squadrons, we've been hyped for it ever since they announced it uh, several months ago. And we've been running hype trains on our channels. Super pumped. Lots of people are joining in. Make sure you check them out. All right, let's start out with Star Wars Squadrons. Will? $39.99. Not a bad price. That is a great start point. Yes, not a $60 game. I think it was a great move by EA. They're also doing no microtransactions right? and nothing planned DLC-wise. And I don't know if they will keep that off the chart or not. They're probably waiting to see how well the game does. But so far, not even any, any cosmetics or anything, which is crazy. But I, uh, I appreciate that. I like a game that's done. It's going to come with six multiplayer maps. Mm -hmm. uh, it also has a full single player campaign. Right. I think I, I read, I don't know how true this was. I read it's between uh, five to eight hours to finish the campaign for single player. Not too bad. No, it's not bad. Uh, I mean, this is a game that I think most people are going to buy for multiplayer anyways. Right. And so having that added in is a nice little touch. And right. if you watch this, the CG, CG trailer that they released, wow. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I think the single player is more for really learning the different ships. And I think it's more of like a tutorial for, for all of that while throwing a little bit of, of story for those, those people who enjoy that. I don't really think it's the, the main draw of this game, like you said. But yeah, yeah I mean, the, the, the FMVs look awesome. I mean, you know, we kind of talked about this before, but the, the FMVs, the videos really make you feel something. And I, I think if if they do that with the with the story and they do that with the voice acting inside the game itself, I really think it's going to be a solid hit. I completely agree. We talked about this when the CG trailer dropped that I have always obviously and I think most people have always been on the side of the rebels. Right. Right. You want you want the underdog, you know, the empire suppressing them. But that CG trailer, man, it made the poor empire look like they were the, you know, the underdogs and. They were getting suppressed by the rebels and hunted down and murdered. And uh, mm -hmm. it really made me, you know, feel for the Empire a little bit there. But that pilot, uh, whoever they did uh, for voice acting and uh, the, uh, I forget what they call it now, the motion, the motion sensing or motion tracking for that character just did a great job. His facial expressions, you know, the animations are all part of that too. But the, the whole team that worked in that short would did a great job. Absolutely. So we obviously we are super pumped. It's going to have uh, a five versus five mode for multiplayer, and it's going to have ranked play. I cannot wait to jump into a cockpit full VR support, which is awesome. Um, Absolutely, and it's completely cross playable on any platform. You can hook up with uh, you know people on PlayStation VR you can play with PC VR. Um, people Do you think on... that's going to be compatible at launch? Yeah. You think so? I think yeah. they're going to have hiccups. Unfortunately, as much as I want it to just work. I'm I'm uh, I don't know I'm I'm still kind of I'm cautiously optimistic. I think it's going to work after the rush. I mean, every AAA title that releases that has multiplayer it always gets hammered, and mm -hmm. I mean that's just how things tend to be. Um, unless you 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 allow self self hosting, that's usually the way to get around that is having like one of us host the server. But the problem with that is when you have matchmaking all that stuff put in, you still have to communicate with a main central hub. And so I think we're definitely going to see some issues that release here with, you know, just the servers getting hammered. But I do think after that, I think it's going to be smooth because here's the thing I've never quite understood. Everybody always makes out cross play and all this stuff so hard to do when if you do it from the beginning, it's just as easy as cross play with with I mean, just as easy as multiplayer with the same system. It's really just the limitations of how you programmed it. And, and I think what happens to a lot of games is they make them, and number one, that you don't build a game for multiplayer, at least you didn't used to. And so when you try to implement it, yeah, it was jankity. And and you know, and then we had the days of the console wars where, you know, well, no, this is only a Xbox exclusive or a PlayStation exclusive. We don't have to worry about crossplay. 
But now that's all changing, and I think games are going to be built from the ground up to be able to do cross-play, and I think it's going to be smooth and it's going to be solid, which is something I've been looking forward to forever. Right. I know my brother doesn't really have a have the uh, skills or whatever for the keyboard and mouse, and I know that's one thing that he always complains about. Is, as right. far as, oh, they got the PC elitist, blah, blah, blah. And I don't know. Like, I could play on either console, and I just want to be able to play with, with my friends no matter what they're playing on. Oh, absolutely. I completely agree. So this game also not, not only supporting full VR, full uh, HOTA support, joystick support, pretty much anything you want to fly with, which is awesome. Let's talk about VR real quick. So with with VR being pre- pretty awesome, uh, in my opinion, I, I enjoy doing it. But, you know, it's it's one of those things that when I do it, I get tired quick. And I, and it's probably the, the the camera right in front of my face and right by my eyes and everything. And but can you see yourself playing this for hours using VR? I, no. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna try this probably like once or twice to check out the cockpits and everything and get that feel. But I'm probably not gonna play it my everyday playing. I'm not gonna be using VR. No, um, I mean I love VR, and I think maybe. With the new Oculus stuff that's wireless, the Oculus Quest, especially mm-hmm. the two that's coming out, I mm-hmm. think that's going to help a lot. I still have the first generation, and you do too, the HTC Vive. And, well, you had the first generation of Oculus. And, right. And, it, I mean, it's heavy. It's not comfortable. My head gets hot. Um, it just wears you out. I mean, it does. It wears your eyes out. It makes you tired. And it's just not really made for long-term gaming. And as much as I love it, and like you said, I cannot wait to check it out. And it, and you know what? I'm pretty sure this is going to be, whenever I introduce VR to somebody, it's going to be the game that I showed them first now. I mean, right. without even playing it, unless it's jankity, but I don't think it's going to be. But, I mean, just the experience. Because Elite, Elite Dangerous is the game that I'm going to compare this to because I think it's going to be very similar as far as the VR setup. And it is amazing. But you don't want to spend four hours hauling cargo in VR. I mean, that's just, it's cool. It's a cool experience to have, not something mm-hmm. you really want to do long-term, at least not not something I want to do long-term. So this may surprise you. I mean, maybe not. Maybe I'm not sure. But Battlefront 2 for the PlayStation 4 was actually the first, like, Star Wars flight experience that you had in VR. So I'm not sure if you knew that or not. I played one of them. They ported it over at some point. And it was where you were um, at, uh, what's the ship? The Millennium Falcon Falcon was parked there. And you would, could walk up to it and like look around. I don't know if it was the same thing. I can't remember what it came from. Well, this was, it. yeah, this was Battlefront 2 when it came out for PlayStation 4. Uh, they released a, an edition that actually had the VR support in it. And I actually remember going out to buy that game uh, at my local Meijer. I got it a day early because they had had it out there. And uh, it, it was actually really cool to be able to fly an X-Wing around. But again, it was just a real short game, and it was kind of almost like a demo. And I wonder if they kind of based a little bit of the cockpit and stuff off of that. So I'm interested to see it. Oh, yeah, definitely. I'm sure they used some of the parts of it. All right, let's get to the game modes for this real quick. Sounds so good. it's going to start with three game modes. You have the single player we talked about. Mm-hmm. You have two multiplayer modes, Dogfight and fleet battles so right. basically we talked to those talked to those a little bit dogfight and fleet battles are both five versus five but the fleet battles is the ranked uh dog fights just head to head where you're trying to blow each other up and uh fleet battles you actually have objectives mm-hmm. so you not only are you trying to blow each other up but there's also objectives that objectives that you can complete uh to to you know advance your team so i'm pretty excited for both those modes to be completely honest, I like just being able to relax and just fight in dogfight mode. And then I also, I've always been a huge fan of like capture the flag or, you know, do this objective and while you're trying to shoot each other type of games. Right. I think it's going to work out really good. So I'm worried about the fleet battles just really feeling like a one lane, one lane tug of war where you're going to be, you know, whoever's blows up the most ships kind of pushes to the other person's uh, like medium ships or light ships or whatever ca- like capital ships and then pushing on to the next and then pushing on to the next and you get we get pushed back and i'm worried that's just going to be a tug of war and it's going to get boring i mean that's always a problem with uh battlefield well multiplayer games but battlefield is the one i play the most and mm-hmm. there's definitely modes where it's not balanced 
and it's just not fun. And so that that takes some precision. That's based off of your map building, how well your maps are built, and how you do the whole. Okay, this side's getting steamrolled. How do you supplement this, the team that's losing to make it even out without making it too powerful, or do you just let it be? You know, and, and that's the whole thing. Then you have the whole ordeal with team switching. Now, luckily, since this is only five versus five, this is I don't think it's going to be as big of a factor. It's going to be much harder to steamroll a team unless your team's just terrible. I mean, that's going to happen. You're going to fight some elite teams. This does have ranking, though, a mm-hmm. ranking system. And so hopefully it, they've got it uh, tuned right. And so you'll face other squads of equivalent rank and skill, you know. Mm-hmm. So hopefully we'll see how that all plays out. I mean, you never know about that stuff until the game gets optimized and gets out, you know, into the real world to see how it works. But if they do right. it all right, it would be awesome. Absolutely. You're always going to have that in multiplayer games where it's player versus player, where you have uneven and unbalancing issues, you know, and I, I, there's no way that this is going to be any, any exception to that rule. Right. All right. Let's talk about the single player a little bit. So you're going to start this, uh, the single player missions and story, you play both sides and it starts right after the first death store death, right after the first death star has been destroyed. Um, so right before, or right, or I'm sorry, post Return of the Jedi. Really? So you don't act, so in one of the videos that I saw, it kind of looked like it was going to be, you may actually have one of the trench runs based on like the little art animation. I kind of think that might not be in the game or it might be like a a scene before you start playing. Gotcha. Because I think you take over right after that ship's been destroyed, the Death Star. Man, I would, I would have loved to actually, that be one of the battles is an actual Death Star battle. I mean, maybe that's the entrance. Maybe that's you learning to... That's the first thing you do. Yeah. That'd be kind of cool. cool. That would be awesome, man. I I don't know. I've That's always been one of my favorite... like, Star Wars scenes. And in all the games that I've always played, when they have that, like, in, I remember playing a, a, an X-Wing game for the 32X on Sega... You know, the Sega Genesis 32X system. And I remember playing that and to be able to do that, the trench round and blowing up Death Star and, and stuff like that and the Super Star Destroyer, that was just so, so much fun. Definitely. All right, so let's talk about the ships. There's four for each side. Uh, on the Rebel side, you have the T-65 X-Wing Starfighter. You have the BTL Y-Wing. You have the A-Wing Interceptor. And you have the U-Wing Support Craft. Uh, I think we've seen all these ships in Battlefront 2, didn't we? I don't think anything really is new, anything that we've never flown, except obviously it's yeah. going to be this this game's take on it. Yeah, there's actually, so the ships, as far as like you had the X-Wing, you had the Y-Wing, and then you had the A-Wing in Battlefront 2. What's new for this, you've never been able to fly before, is the U-Wing. So that's going to be a new ship that uh, is completely new to this. Okay. So the U-Wing was introduced... Um, you know, obviously, this is going to be set in more of the New Republic as opposed to the the original series, right? So, with the U-wing, it was more introduced in. Um, oh man, what is the name? What was that? Rogue One, I believe it was Rogue One. So let's go to the Empire Hangar. You have the Tie Fighter, you have the Tie Bomber, the Interceptor, and the PR or sorry, RP Reaper. I'm not familiar with the Reaper. Is that new to this series? Uh yeah. And so that that was that wasn't in Battlefront 2 either. Okay. I don't know the ship. So I assume it's going to be the equivalent of the uh U-wing, but I don't really know the like the support craft. But I don't really know what it's going to be capable of, but it'll be interesting to see. So the Tie Reaper wasn't wasn't that what uh Kylo Ren flew? I I mean I could be wrong, but it, it looks very similar to that. Man, I don't. I'm not sure. Maybe. Yeah, it does kind of look like it. That, that was a pretty big ship, though. I guess it depends on on uh, how the wings come. I guess I, I don't remember exactly. Besides when yeah. they when they fold it up and you know, right? Yeah, it, I yeah. Don't know. It, it does look like it might be though. Really cool looking ship. Diff, completely different design than what we've kind of seen before from Tie Fighters. Right. The Tie Interceptor we've seen, which is basically the equivalent of the A wing. You've got the Tie Fighter, which is the equivalent of the of the X wing and you've got the tie bomber, which is the equivalent of the Y wing. So I'm, I'm, are you surprised that there's only four ships? No, um, not really. I mean, there is there, 
it, it's hard to balance games like this. And so it's definitely, I, I'm kind of almost happy. I know it seems weird, but I'm almost happy there's not a ton of ships because that can just, it just makes it so hard to balance. And then, you know, you have the, the five man squad who, you know, knows how to min and max everything. And I, I hate that thing. I hate that part of the game of gaming. I just want, I wish almost everything would be randomized. If that makes sense. Hmm, so right. everybody, I something play. right. I just want to have fun. I don't want to have to worry about, you know, this and this and this. But I yeah. guess that's why there's ranked and not ranked. So the U Wing was first seen in uh, Rogue One, but as far as from a movie standpoint. Okay. Captain Andor. We may have seen it in some of the, uh, maybe some of the cartoons or whatever, but I didn't really watch those. All right. Anything else for uh, Squadrons? Mm, no, other than I'm pretty, pretty damn excited about it. Hit all, oh, me too, man. I think we hit all the points. Uh, if you need some uh, people to fly with, make sure you check out our website, maturemindedgamers.com. Hop on our Discord. We have a ton of people excited for this game. Uh, next, we're going to move on to Baldur's Gate 3, which I briefly mentioned at the beginning. Oh, uh, yeah. Once again, we're excited for it. Now, we have been actually running the D&D campaign, the prequel to Baldur's Gate 3. Mm-hmm. Will, you've been D- DMing it. You know the story, right? You've read all of it, correct? Uh, I've read about half of it, to be honest okay. with you. I- I like to reread it over and over. I didn't know if you knew what, what was going down exactly at the end, but I'm excited. I, I really wanted to have it finished before we actually played Baldur's Gate. doesn't look like we're going to get that done unless we wait, which we might. depends on how much we're into Star Wars, I think. Because this is releasing early access. They said it's going to be cooking for about a year before it's done. There is about 20 hours of gameplay in it right now. And That's it's going to release... It's not bad. It's not really. Well, here it is. It, it, it is It is quite a bit, but it's not really a lot for a game of this caliber, if you think about it. Yeah, but like, 20 hours that you here's the thing is like the story in squadrons for 40 bucks. You're getting what you just said, six to eight hours of of, you know, single player game. You're still spending 40 bucks. Well, yeah, I mean, but like, this is early access. And we're only we're, we already get 20, 20 hours. Well, right. But I mean. Multiplayer games, I don't right. expect much of a single player story. This is a completely sure. no. This does have cooperative multiplayer, right. and, and I'll, I'm fine with the 20 hours. I'm just saying I don't think it's going to hurt if we don't play it right away and let it keep cooking. And maybe even this might be a game that would be it'd be smart to wait until full release because I don't know how many games I played in early access and I'm like, oh, I'm tired of that game. And then it, you know it releases a couple years later, it finishes, and I'm like, I don't know if I have the will to go back to it. Now this game. <laughs> This game is Baldur's Gate, so right. I probably would go back to it, but that's one of my pet peeves of early access, and, and I generally like early access. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is coming to Steam. It's coming to Stadia, and good old goodoldgames.com is going to have it. Uh, we know that the story is set in the Forgotten Realms, and it's going to yep. use the 5th edition rule set of D&D. And what are you saying, sir? No, I just, yep, well, I... I hear you so okay. some something to uh to kind of reiterate here as far as the campaign we're playing we are playing descent into avernus so is this going to follow that story are you aware yes so the descent into avernus is the prequel to this so where okay. we end where we end this game is going to start take over from i got gotcha. you right now i don't think it's like the exact same characters or anything but it's going to be the same world and everything so we're going to have an idea of what's going on better than other people might Sure. So we know that you're going to visit several layers of the Underdark and different planes of of, of hell. Uh, you're going to be able to pick from six classes, and this is all early access information too. This may change as it after release, but the six classes in early access right now is the cleric, the fighter, the ranger, the rogue, the warlock, and the wizard. So all the classic D and D, basically. Basically, uh, the player's handbook characters. Right. And then you're, you can be all the normal D&D races, plus they have a Gith Yankee and a vampire, some kind of form Ooh. of vampire, they said, that you can be race-wise. And then it's going to have turn-based combat, which if you played uh, Divinity Original Sin, you'll be very familiar with, I think. And I love that combat. I think it's going to work really good for this. Um, but also something slightly th- that they did in Divinity 2 that I think is cool for this is if we're playing multiplayer and I'm shopping and you get into combat, it doesn't pull me into combat. I can keep doing my shopping while you're fighting. Which I think is really cool. Yeah, I like that a lot. You know, we played a game recently 
that uh, we, you know, we I think we both kind of had fun with that was a Wasteland Three. Oh was yeah, Wasteland, Wasteland Three. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. So like where I could start combat, and you know, you could be off doing something else, and I'm I'm doing some questing and fighting some stuff, and then you can run up and get close, and then start playing in it, right? Absolutely. So I thought that was really cool. I'm kind of glad they introduced this because I remember in origin- uh the Divinity Original Sin, you know, like you're off doing one thing, you're you know you're listening to a story, and I have no idea what's going on or wherever you are, and then combat starts, and I can't even jump in. Right, and that and so in Divinity you could jump in. Oh really? Yeah, I must have missed that. Yeah, I, we didn't play that enough as much as we should have, but um, yeah, you you can jump into combat. Right. What's nice is this was from the same studio, right? That yeah. Baldur's Gate that did Divinity? Yeah, Larian Studio. And I think they've done a great job. They've done a lot of community videos, like mm-hmm. talking about their, their process and different things they're putting in the game, how they're going to handle things. Um, I think I think this is going to be a fantastic game. Um, I don't know since it's early access if it can be game of the year this year, but I think next year it has a strong chance. Plus we have you know another game that I want to talk about uh, maybe surprise talk about Cyberpunk 2077, which is coming out at the end of October. And I, I am very excited for that game. It's only single player, which is the downside. We like multiplayer games here, but right. Um, yeah. So l- let's get back on topic here. Baldur's Gate 3 is also going to have uh, special built in Twitch crowd choices. So if you're playing on Twitch and streaming, your people watching your stream can actually help steer your direction and no lock, way. Yeah, lock in choices for you and stuff. That's awesome. Yeah, it's, I think it's pretty cool. More and more games are doing that, and I've ne- I've never seen that. That's I mean, that's that's freaking cool. That definitely gets you uh, your community involved more when you're streaming games. Definitely does. And then gets yeah, that's that's really cool. So uh, early access release, there's only going to be one difficulty setting to start with. Um, it's just going to be the the default difficulty. They said they're gonna, you know, obviously add more as early access goes on. Okay. There's no alignments. They're not putting that system in there at all. So, hmm. well, I'm sorry. There is going to be an alignment system, but they're not going to restrict it. It's not going to be like, you know, you're neutral good, so you can you can only do this and this. Ah, so actually, how you act it depends on what's right. It's based on your, it's based on the actions you take in the game. That's cool. Um, it is going to have um, modding support. But it's not going to happen until after full release. Okay. Which it was that was really big for uh, um, Divinity Original Sin. Some of the mods that was had they had a pretty big modding community and they did a lot of cool things with the mods. Hmm. Uh, this one so, has a definite global release. It's 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on October the seventh. I love global uh, releases. We're going through a little bit of that right now with Squadrons, with people getting it at different times. I yeah. hate. I hate the fact that people can use a VPN and say they're from somewhere else to unlock a game. I think that's the dumbest thing. I don't know why they don't just global release it for everybody at one time and make it easy. I mean, I don't care if people use a VPN. It's just annoying that they don't just global release it at one time. Let me ask you a question on the multiplayer. Is the is the story going to be different? Like... Uh, play multiplayer it's it's one story play single player it's a different story no and i know it's going to change depending on what you do knowing this game and who the creators are you know because the decisions and the interactions that you have and and whatever are going to change the story but overall overarching story it's all the same correct it it is all the same yes this decision does have the most branches of choices you can make though um i want to say it was 10 times more than divinity original sin as far as branching and choices. And so if you choose one thing, it completes a whole new branch of that quest that you can do. And I, I want to say there was like 850 branches or something like that. They said they, they said it in one of the videos, but I can't remember the exact number. Wow. Yeah. Quite a bit. Do you know if it's going to allow drop in and drop out co-op? So like you're playing single player and I want to come in with my character. Can I do that? I don't know if they've actually talked about that directly, but they they did that in Divinity, so I'd assume they would have the same thing set up for this one. That would be pretty cool, though. Because you, you'll have your party, and then all you do is you know invite somebody to join you, or somebody joins you, and they just take over one of the characters. You just basically assign them that character. Oh, uh, okay. So if you start a multiplayer game, you kind of want to play the same people. 
Uh, usually, yeah. I mean, just because you're familiar with them, but you know, the right. the other thing like that Divinity did that was cool was you know you could have like you know eight to ten different party people, party members, so you could go and pick if maybe your friend wasn't playing with you that day. You could go swap out someone else and just go level them up a little bit. And then right, your friend, but then you're then gonna be f- making decisions, you know. Well, I mean, it just depends. I just kind of meant going out and killing mobs, but yeah, I know what you mean. Right. I wouldn't do much story without your other your other players. But. Sure. All right, so we're really excited for this game. Uh, again, it's releasing October the 7th. This one is a $60 game, and you can pick it up on Steam, Stadia, or good old games. Make sure you check out our website, maturemightygamers.com. Have yourself a great day.